There's an old adage that there's no arguing taste. I have as much right to like what I like as you have to like what you like. But if I like something most people don't, say for example, cars that predate the Nixon presidency, then what I like comes with a peculiar set of needed skills that people who don't like that thing don't need. Now, some of us got to watch our moms or dads as they spent long hours under the hood, tweaking, repairing, and enhancing, and learned a lot of the basics that way. Now, not everybody grows up working on cars. When I got my first bug, I barely knew a torque wrench from a feeler gauge. Luckily for me, I met a friend who not only knew his way around the Volkswagen's engine, but was willing to take me aside and actually show me a thing or two about how to take care of mine. And it's true that if you don't have somebody who can show you the ropes, you can always get the manual. But if you don't already speak the language, eh, it might as well be written in Greek, or German, or Klingon for that matter. Modern cars don't expect you to know much, especially not the kinds of things that are basic maintenance to a classic like this. Actually, that's kind of the purpose of this video. I want to make sure that you know how to keep your Volkswagen happy. If my dad's car is happy, he's happy. Now it doesn't take a genius or an expert to do most of the maintenance on an old bug. So today what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the valves that control the flow of fuel air mixture into the combustion chamber and exhaust out. And don't worry if you don't have a fancy engine bay like this one. I usually do this in my driveway. It's important to make this adjustment periodically and the reason for that is because you get a lot of wear in between these surfaces here and here. And when you do that, it creates leakage in the combustion chamber. The car will still run, even if it's not perfect. Volkswagens are very forgiving, but you do lose efficiency. The first thing you're going to need to accomplish this project is your tools. And what we have here, the first tool being your flathead screwdriver, 13 millimeter open end wrench, your feeler gauges, which are increments of thousandths of an inch and millimeter, your sockets, both 13 and 15 millimeter, and your ratchet. Probably one of the most important tools is your torque wrench. There's many different kinds of torque wrenches. We chose a dial torque wrench. The torque wrenches range from $50 all the way up to $300, depending on the quality that you want. I recommend going for quality. If you're doing something important here, you need a specific torque, so go quality. Since you're going to be lifting the car to do the project, you're going to want a jack. Now this jack is two tons, which is more than enough to lift this car. Lift this car, not hold it up. In order to hold it up, you're going to want these jack stands. So speaking of stuff falling on you, you're going to be under your car looking up where things are going to come down and hit you in the eye. So protect, protect your, your eyes. eyes. Rounding out your supplies, gloves. Now you can get latex, but some people have allergies. These are nitrile. No allergy problems. See that disky like looking spot right there on the bottom of the transaxle? That is where we're going to put the jack. Okay, your jack stands, they go right here. Underneath the torsion bar. That's this guy right here. Now this might look like I've got enough room to work, but you'll notice that this jack is really in my way. And as soon as I let it down to be on the jack stands, I'm going to run out of a lot of room here. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get it up as far as it'll go, which it is right now, put the jack stands under, let the jack back down, and then use a couple of these wooden blocks to give me the extra space that I need to put the jack stands where I actually want them. It's kind of tedious having to jack your car up twice for the same job, but it beats being squeezed by an overly affectionate oil pan, you know what I mean? When jacking up your car, the car will move a few inches as you can see here. Don't forget to move your chocks back in to hold the tire. Once your chocks are in place, come back here and reset your jack stands. Also, make sure they're directly under the torsion bar. 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off the passenger side valve cover. Just slip your screwdriver under this wire right here. Flip it on down. She might fight you a little, but not terribly hard. She might drip a little too. So if you're doing this in the living room, your wife or mom is going to be ticked. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this rocker arm assembly so I can tighten There are four head studs just underneath of that. This one's 13 millimeter. So that's the socket you're going to need. Should we see if Mindy fights me to keep her rocker arm assembly on? Like she always does on this side? man. Now this is where we're going to use the torque wrench. That head stud I was just pointing to needs to either be tightened down to 20 foot-pounds for an 8 millimeter stud or 25 foot-pounds for a 10 millimeter stud. You'll be able to tell which is which because the bolts that hold on the rocker arm assembly that we just pulled off, they're 8 millimeter. So if the head studs are bigger than that, they're 10 millimeter. Obviously Mindy's are 8, so we've already set our torque wrench to 20 foot-pounds. Now as we tighten these down, you don't want to just start at one end or the other and work your way across. Start with the middle two, and then do the outsides. And then when you dial in your specific torque, and you're cranking on this, you always want to pull, you never want to push. When you pull on this without bouncing, it'll give you a click, letting you know when you meet your torque. Now we'll just slap the rocker arm assembly back on. It does help to put it on right side up. And it's usually kind of a trick to get these push rods back into their sockets. Now most of the way down, you just want to use your regular ratchet. When it gets to the part where it offers some real resistance, that's when you bring the torque wrench in to just fine tune it. At this point, I'm going to turn the engine completely through a full cycle. Remember those push rods I said were kind of tricky to get put back into their sockets? Well, let's make sure that they seat properly so that everything's where we really want it when we actually get to the valve. When turning the pulleys, the manual says use a 19 millimeter and a 21 millimeter socket to do so. I'm going to go ahead and just use my hand. Since the belt's loose, I might have to pinch in and turn the pulley. I need to find my top dead center. And how I do that is I pull off here. Don't remove any wires, just go ahead and pull the cap off. And this right here is your rotor and your distributor. Now what that needs to do is it's going to come all the way around and line up with this mark right here. Down here on the pulley, you also need this mark right here to line up with this portion of the block. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it and watch the rotor go around. This is your head, and these are the components that will be in your head that sits on top of your block. This push tube rides along another shaft in the block, and when this load comes around, it pushes on the push rod to lift this rocker up this way. Now this screw pushes down on the valve, which opens it up, and the spring allows it to all reseat. We're ready to begin our valve adjustment on piston number one. You can see here both valves. My feeler gauge is at six thousandths of an inch and that's what we're looking at for the clearance. I'll slide this right between the top of the valve stem and the adjusting screw to get my six thousandths of an inch. You want it to kind of grab a little bit so you have a little bit of grab there. If seven thousandths of an inch fits, it's too loose. 
right here, the screw, this is where we're making our adjustment. To adjust this, we're backing off our lock nut, adjusting the screw to get our six thousandths of an inch, and then once we achieve this, we screw our lock nut back down. Time for piston number two. Okay, you'll notice this is bottom dead center, or in other words, 180 degrees off of top dead center, and the distributor rotor is aimed at piston two right now. All right, let's do valve. Let's do the valve for piston number two. Now, I've actually already loosened the lock nuts. Got the got the feeler gauge in there. Got her where she wants to be. I'm gonna tighten the nut down by hand as far as it'll go. And then switch to this guy. Beautimous. Sometimes what'll happen as you loosen the lock nut, the adjusting screw will come with it. If it gets stuck together like that, not a big deal. Just tighten the screw back down and you may actually have to Hold the screw in place while you tighten it. It can be tricky with only one hand, but it's totally doable. Okay, so technically I'm not using one hand, but you know. Don't judge me, man! And you probably noticed I got kind of warm. I took my sweatshirt off. Sorry if it threw you. But we're now that we're done with these two valves, all we got to do is clap this back on, put the wire back in place, and pull down to make sure it seats. Ready for pistons three and four? Easy peasy, you've already seen it. The only difference is now we're on the driver's side. You pull off your valve cover. To remove your rocker arm assembly, tighten down the heads, replace the rocker arm, cycle the engine through. Notice where the rotor is. Piston 3 is the one towards the front of the car, piston 4 is at the back. That's really all there is to it. Okay, so you have adjusted all eight valves on the driver's side. You've replaced your valve cover, put the clip in place, pulled the cover down to make sure she seats. You've Clip the distributor cap back on. Give it a little twist to make sure that seats correctly. And now the only thing left is start her up and let's see how she sounds. Now we're just gonna give it a little rev. Listen for any knocking or tapping noises. Time for a drive. See you down the road. Try it again. Wait, so he can be in the video, but I can't. Yeah, that's big bird. Oh, I'm so yeah. Dad, 